Let me invite the Acting Council General, Council General McCreeth, to come forward and bring the message of the Prime Minister. Reverend Calvin McIntyre, our officiant. Reverend David Ball, host pastor, United Union Methodist. Reverend Cannon Hartley, guest preacher from Westmoreland, Jamaica, my parish of my birth. Elected officials, I have a list here, please bear with me, please. Senator Leroy Comrie, Dr. Matthew Eugene, Assemblyman Nick Perry, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, Mary Bishop sitting in for her today. Dr. Una Clark has a representative here. Honorable Dr. Genevieve. Genevieve Brown Metzger, former Consul General, and her husband, Dr. Stephen Metzger, Ms. Leslie and Samuel, Ms. Carmita Ambrose, Ms. Joan Pinnock, Ms. Carleen Largay, Mr. Patrick Jolly, Ms. Erin Luhin, Vivian Fulton, Doreen Denny, President of the Nurses Association, Claudette Powell, Jamaica Diaspora Health Sector, and recipient of the Governor General's Award. Ladies and gentlemen, community leaders, staff at the consulate and permanent mission, my wife Tamika, special invited guests, Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica, a pleasant evening. It is my esteemed honor and privilege to greet you as acting consul general and to welcome you to this service of thanksgiving in celebration of Jamaica's 54th anniversary of independence. Our achievement over the past 54 years cannot be encapsulated in a line, a phrase, a letter, or even a book. The journey we have traveled is marked with period of struggles, whereby our national heroes fought and gained our freedom. It has moments of great tribulation, such as the lowering of the Union Jack and the hoisting of the, our black, green, and gold flag giving birth to our nation in 1962. Our remarkable journey as a nation continued with our athletes who left the world in awe as our country was placed in the Guinness Book of World Records. Friends, time would fail to mention the many music icons and entrepreneurs who have broken the glass ceiling and let the world know that we can be the best in the world at whatever we set ourselves to do. And today we continue to write history, history for the next generation. As such, I wish to express my sincere appreciation to everyone here present who have never allowed themselves to forget their roots. Whether you're from uptown, downtown, or from the deep rural hills of Maroon Town or Mocker, we are all Jamaicans, notwithstanding you call the USA your new home. In a quote from Nelson Mandela, he stated that a fundamental concern of, for others in, an, in our individual and community lives would go a long way in making the world a better place, the one that we passionately dreamed of. With this in mind, I invite you to join hands and hearts together in celebrating this year as we embrace our national theme. Let's get together and feel all right. Let us continue to work together to find solutions to the problems affecting our homeland and fellow countrymen. The consulate has started discussions with individuals from the diaspora on building stronger linkages and bridging the gap with Jamaica and its diaspora here in the Northeast USA. And we encourage you 
to become part of the solution. In closing, I thank all the organizations and all of you for your continued support and partnership. And we pledge to do our best to deliver quality service as we work together in building a better Jamaica. I also wish to express my sincere appreciation to Reverend Calvin Cannon McIntyre, who over the years have been a tower of strength in participating in services such as these. And this year, in his capacity, this one will be his last. And sir, I just want to salute you and to tell you thanks for your support over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite you to turn your attention to the overhead monitors for the independence message to the diaspora from the most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica. God bless you, one love. My Jamaican brothers and sisters in the diaspora, I greet you well. It is with a sense of honor and immense pride that I convey this message as Prime Minister of our beloved country, marking the 54th anniversary of our independence. The lowering of the Union Jack and the raising of the esteemed black, green, and gold Jamaican flag as the clock struck midnight on the 5th of August, 1962, ushering in Independence Day on August 6th, heralded the dawn of a new day for Jamaica and its people. Independence affirmed our sovereignty, giving us a launching pad for the creation of a more prosperous society where equality and respect for all would be guaranteed. The charge of our generation is to secure our economic sovereignty and independence. As we mark this significant occasion each year, we recall the epic struggles of our founding fathers and mothers and the tenacity in their campaign for political independence. Each, in their own way, ignited the flames of freedom so we could emerge from colonial rule and truly pursue nationhood. To them, we pay tribute, for to them, we are eternally indebted. As we reflect on the journey that culminated in our nation's independence. Let us recognize and embrace the role we are all called to play, whether at home or in the diaspora, to make Jamaica as successful as she can be, enabling her many sons and daughters to pursue their aspirations and achieve their full potential. Independent Jamaica is now 54 years old. It means that we have been in command of our own affairs for over half a century. An important part of celebrating our independence, therefore, is reflecting on our stewardship of the resources and opportunities bequeathed to us. A prominent place has to be given in those reflections to the national decisions we have made as a country and the consequences of those decisions. I've always maintained we have accomplished much in 54 years as an independent state, but there is a shared view that we could have and should have achieved so much more. The Emancipence festivities must not distract us from our realities or cause us to lose sight of the monumental work and sacrifices that still lie ahead of us. At the same time, we must not reflect for the sole purpose of engaging in blame. Indeed, this is a time for learning from our past experiences as a people and recommitting as Jamaicans in the diaspora to playing our part in hastening the pace of Jamaica's growth and development while avoiding the pitfalls of the past. As we celebrate the 54th anniversary of Jamaica's independence, I implore you as members of the diaspora to renew and reaffirm your commitment to playing a part in addressing critical aspects of national life that remain issues of concern. I often express the view that Jamaicans domiciled in the diaspora represents the Commonwealth of Jamaica, and as such, 
you must never cease focusing attention on matters pertinent to Jamaica's development and the quality of life of its citizens. Yours must be a spirited and sustained campaign to mobilize the diaspora and leverage the considerable influence and network of resources at your disposal to champion Jamaica's cause and advance the development interests of our people. The management of our economy remains a critical area of focus. As you would appreciate, a lot of hard work has gone into implementing the structural reforms required under the existing four-year extended fund facility with the International Monetary Fund. My administration is unequivocally committed to fostering and maintaining macroeconomic stability, as well as sustained debt reduction. Importantly, we are committed to exercising diligence and creativity in spurring growth, attracting investments, providing avenues for greater diaspora participation, and creating jobs for our people. While our hands remain firmly on the wheel in ensuring successful completion of the IMF program, collaboration with other key multilateral institutions is underway in earnest. And talks have already begun as to the kind of relationship Jamaica will have with the IMF when the current program ends in March 2017. The government is fully cognizant that while considerable strides have been made in the implementation of economic reforms, Jamaica is by no means out of the woods. Let me encourage you to play a part as we recommit ourselves to improving the productivity and efficiency of our economy by ensuring that all our labor force is trained and certified and that businesses are able to retool and incorporate the latest technology in their production. As we continue our journey towards development and increased prosperity as a nation, it is imperative that we embrace the opportunities that lie before us and reach for the success we are capable of attaining. On the occasion of yet another celebration of our nation's independence, I wish for you, our brothers and sisters abroad, a very happy and fulfilling independence. gentlemen, that's the young Prime Minister of Jamaica. Now, let me extend my own quote of welcome to all who are here. The number is looking smaller than normal, but maybe it's because the church is bigger. <laughs> Nevertheless, oh, somebody's a rain set up. Now, I don't know if you are tired of people calling you from Jamaica asking you for credit. Do you have that experience? Oh, some people don't want to say anything. Well, you know, Jamaica, Jamaicans are coming, becoming very big, big these days. They beg everything. I heard that this man, and it was Canon Perrin who told me about it. So don't blame me, blame him. Canon Perrin said that there was this man begging outside a bank and every day he would have one hand stretched out begging. But on one occasion they saw him with both hands. So a man went up to him and said, what is this with these two hands? He said, boy, business so good I set up another branch. <laughs> Such is the nature of things. Now let me introduce the clergy that are here. Of course, we were welcomed by uh, the senior pastor of this place, Reverend Ball. At the far end is the Reverend Clegorn and Reverend Maxine Clegorn, and she's from Trelawney. Now, have you ever wondered about the nearness of Caribbean countries, the two that are closest in culture and everything are Jamaica and Antigua and Barbuda. The reason is very simple. During slavery in Jamaica, it was easier to buy a slave than to repair a sick one. 
So when Antigua ran out of slaves, they went to Jamaica and bought slaves. So that's why the people are so close in culture, food, and everything. And so you have to be careful how you chat patwa beside an Antiguan. Because I said to a lady in my church, she, had, she wanted to involve me in something, and I told her, I said, cockroach, no business in a fall fight. And she said, Father, how oh, you know that? My grandma used to say to me, <laughs> indicating that I'm that old. Anyhow, we have in our midst, Canon Glenville Edwards, and he is from Antigua. Next to him is our preacher for the day. He has such a long title, you have to read it yourself. The very Reverend Canon, the Honorable Hartley D. Perrin, CDJP, Costos Rotolorium of Westmoreland. <laughs> now behind me is somebody that is no stranger to our independence service. I'm making reference to the Reverend Hart. And she is even dressed in Jamaican color. Stand up and take a bow, man. She said, otherwise call Miss Matilu. You see, I won't give you her other name, you know, but she insists that she must be called Miss Matilu. And she came all the way from Connecticut, you know. Came down on Turtle Express. So she left from morning and she arrived here in time. <laughs> and then Dr. Slater opened the service with prayer. You see how she dressed beautifully? When I saw her, I thought it was Queen Pempe, you know. But she said, no, it's Dr. Slater. And of course, you all know who I am by now. In case they don't know, I might have to tell them. You know, there was this lazy person who never liked to preach. Never liked to preach. So he turned up at his first service. Got in the pulpit, he said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And everybody anticipating in the sermon. He said, do you know what I'm going to preach about? And everybody said, no. He said, neither will I tell you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so everybody said, what is? So the following Sunday, got in the pulpit again, and I said, well, all right. It must have something. It must have the word of the Lord today. So he said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you know what I'm going to preach about? And everybody said, yes. He said, neither will I tell you. I don't need to tell you. So they said, all right, we'll have to catch this camp. So the deacon went around and organized the, con the congregants. said, half of you will say yes, and half will say no. So he got in the pulpit and he said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you know what I'm going to talk about? And half say yes, and the other half say no. He said, those who know, tell those who don't know. <laughs> so for those who are coming for the first time, ask those who know. <laughs> but, um, Everybody been saying that they heard that I'm leaving. Yes, I am leaving New York. I'm going back to Jamaica. But I can guarantee you one thing. I'm not leaving my wife. <laughs> I'm taking her with me. Now, Dr. Our Council General, former Council General, look at me and say, you look the same, you're looking young. And I look at her and said, you're looking 25 years younger. So I think we have both agreed that you can't wait until you get old to retire. Because you're going to die shortly after. So retire when you're young. And grow into oldness. And enjoy all 
the niceties of life, including the good Jamaican white rum. <laughs> so having said that, I want to welcome everybody. And the fact that I will not be here next year does not say you will not turn out. You will come for the 55th and you will support the consulate. And of course, Miss Hyacinth Bloomfield. Where's Miss Bloomfield? Miss Hyacinth, there she is. She deserves a good round of applause because she has been carrying this burden as cheer for a long time. Long live Miss Hyacinth to do more work. Miss Hyacinth, you know, the, you know what we say at the Church of the Good Shepherd? The reward for good work is more work. <laughs> so we are going to stand and we are going to sing a hymn. Great is thy faithfulness.
show of unity, we are going to listen to the Independence Choir as we hold hands and they will sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. <laughs> 